Hi neighbors, welcome back to another video of Cooking with Neighbors. My name is Jerry Ellen. Welcome to my home. I appreciate you being here. I really do. Taking time out of your day. Thank you. This is part of my video today. I am doing a recipe out of this book given to me by my friend Michelle and I'm going to have links to Michelle and her channel in the description box below this video. But on with the on with the show. Uh, this uh, cookbook has 186 pages, okay? And out of those 186 pages, that thick part there is all recipes. Recipes not just from New Brunswick, from uh, and uh, uh, not just the flavors of New Brunswick, but uh, the East Coast of Canada. There's some recipes in there I remember from my childhood too. Um, so, I can't wait to do more recipes in this book. Today though, a nice simple thing that I think would be great for this time of year is this one here. It's a tartar sauce, okay? But I'm half in the recipe because it's just Graham and I. Okay, I, I wrote down uh, the half. You get yourself a, a deep enough bowl for a recipe. Three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. A nice, you pick your favorite mayonnaise, but a nice quality mayonnaise uh, can make a nice quality tartar sauce. Okay, but use the one that you enjoy the taste from, okay? This is a half a cup of sweet relish, or you can chop up some gherkins, okay? Some baby gherkins and do it that way if you want. I minced up a half a teaspoon of capers and I minced a couple of tablespoons of onion. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. A half a teaspoon of minced garlic a half a teaspoon of olive oil, a, qu a quarter of a teaspoon of dill weed, a half a teaspoon of prepared mustard. All right, Marietta, honey, mama coming. An eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. The capers are optional. And this is optional. This is a half teaspoon of anchovy paste. I, I like capers and I like anchovy paste. But if you have anybody that's allergic to seafood that you're sharing things, well, you're not gonna... This is good for on uh, sandwiches too, right? So like if you're making sandwiches and you have somebody that's uh, allergic to the seafood, then you uh, might want to let them know or, or leave it out. I didn't rinse my uh, capers. It didn't say to, so I didn't. I'm just going to get a tasty poo. I might need more mayonnaise. I put it, um, I, my, my measurement might have been off with my mayonnaise. Because the way that it fell into the cup, there was gaps. Now, tartar sauce. The original recipe is three cups. So I know that I didn't want to have three cups, but in a way it wouldn't have mattered if I did make three cups because you can freeze this up to six months in the freezer. So you know those little snack bags that you get in a box uh, for lunches or what have you. You can put some tartar sauce in those little packets of snack Ziploc bags and freeze them. Take them out when you're having your fish and chips or whatever, right? I'm gonna be making a crispy fish batter, crispy, crispy deliciousness. I'm gonna be making that in this video as well as uh, doing some stuff in my dining room. So I'm gonna do the stuff, in, after I clean this up, I'm gonna do some stuff in my dining room and then uh, go over here, come back in the kitchen and get the fish and chips done, okay? Before we get into the dining room, a bit about the book. Karen Powell is the author. Um, 
This book is the best of from her 2001 and her 2005 cookbooks. And it is just full, uh, jam-packed with deliciousness. It has traditional fish cakes, uh, Atlantic deep dish uh, salmon pie, strawberry snow crab, summer shrimp stuff. Oh my gosh, like it just goes on and on of oh, great stuff. It's times like this when I read this book like this that I miss living on the East Coast because I miss the ocean and getting all the nice fresh seafood. Put it in a jar. Okay, neighbors, I'm in my dining room. Starting to do some cleaning and stuff, spring cleaning. Uh, this china cabinet, it's quite old. It was my, it was my dad's mom's. There's a mirror piece that goes on top ever since I was a kid that's been off, but I still have the mirror piece. Someday I'm gonna get this all fixed up. It's very difficult to move, it's very heavy. I'm gonna put some cardboard or something under it. To try to drag it over to that wall over there because we're getting another china cabinet this weekend. And it's bigger than this one and it's gonna go along that wall. <coughs> Windows down, scattered clouds, smell of spring. I'm op opening up an Etsy shop called Mary Bell's Treasures. Mary Bell was my grandmother, so I'm naming that Etsy shop after her. Uh, I, I have a lot of antiques, a lot of uh, vintage things and antiques and stuff, so I'm opening up a store to start selling those on. And I go to auctions, like I get stuff from auctions and... Uh, the, the china cabinet, actually, we got at a auction. I uh, just got to pick it up. So I'll tell you what I paid for that later. That's another video. I got talk about a steal. So I have some new subscribers. Bonita over at Bonita, Bonita's Kitchen. I've been watching her for years. I love her like a sister. Um, she mentioned my channel on her channel, and some people came over, and some people decided to stay. So I appreciate that. A, a lot. Um, As if all I have is you, and I'll be just fine. When I was a little girl, it was such a treat to drink out of this teacup. I felt like a princess. Isn't that cute? Yeah. And Dad was the type, don't wait for a special occasion to use anything. Just use it and enjoy it because every day is a special occasion. So, frames Aunt Warren got us this for our wedding. It's cool, so far Look at our precious baby there. Hi, sweetie. I'll get a little bed up in here for you, okay? Neighbors, you don't know how much I've been doing. And the house is still turned upside down and backwards and everything else. I got boxes still everywhere. Uh, I am slow at doing stuff. I'm very slow at doing things, though, because my bones hurt. I love her so much. Put Murphy's oil soap in uh, Windex or uh, the glass. Things I don't need, and I know to some it makes no sense, but I'm not living just to pay my debts. I've got nothing against that white picket fence or those big American. 
gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? I'm addicted to antiques and vintage things, but I grew up that way. We had a lot of antiques. Uh, my mom loved it. My dad loved it, like that stuff. So it came natural to fall in love with these things. That's I don't know how many of you are into uh, the queen, but this is uh, from 1953. <laughs> How can we know what tomorrow holds? Yeah, I, I have some dinner for twos planned. I did a menu plan for Graham and I. I just don't know, like sometimes like I say I'm going to do something and then time passes and I don't get it done either because like I wasn't feeling good or something popped up personally or uh, just didn't get around to it. So from now on, I'm just going to go on and just cook. I don't know what I'm going to bake or cook for. I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to do it. So I don't let anybody down because I don't like letting people down. When the other cabinets come, I'm going to be, believe it or not, taking this all out again. And I have been uh, going to be uh, washing everything more more thoroughly. I got I'm gonna put the cocktail shaker stuff where grain can get it. Even though I'm taking it over anyway. taking it out I was thinking like making it kind of tiered to the size I think this is a water goblet but when we were growing up we used to for desserts could be either or I guess I don't know I, I tried looking that one up they all need a good cleaning which they will get lovingly they will get it lovingly but uh, I won't let my wanting to organize get in the way of just getting this together today. A little at a time, what are we doing? This is where it gets tricky. A tea break. A little tea break. I'm gonna show you something outside, people. My, my neighbors. I gotta show you something. Look at that. It's scandalous. We've been getting snow like crazy since last weekend. Snow. Can you believe it? Minus 11 Celsius right now. Hi, neighbors. Got myself a little cleaned up after cleaning the dining room. Snow is coming down a little bit harder now. Uh, I think we're going to have some poor visibility in some areas around here. I uh, believe Hobby is getting off work early. And... It is our date night here in the house. We're not going out anywhere. We're having date night here. And I'm getting ready to make these. Uh, now, I'm not saying this to be arrogant or anything, but I just want you to know how good this recipe is. I'm going to be putting some stuff in it, and you're going to be like, lady, are you crazy? And then you're going to say, I'm going to see how crazy this lady is, and I'm going to make it. And then you're going to make it, and then you're going to say, this is crazy good, okay? Because it is really good. And, it, like, uh... Canada is more of the mom and pop fish shops, okay? Uh, sort of like in the UK, it's like uh, mom and pop places. And I think the United States has more franchise or whatever. So wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, uh, give this recipe a try and let me know what you think. I did do this recipe on the channel a few years back, but it's been uh, maybe almost four years now, three or four years and some people were saying that they want uh, me to do the recipe again. Anyway, also, I was telling my friend Emily over in the UK, hi Emily, about these French fries. They're awesome. So if you have them over there, Emily, these are the fries I was talking about. They're uh, battered with beer batter. 
And someday I'll do a beer batter of fish and chips, but we really like those fish and chips, so you really gotta try it. But I went to the grocery store last weekend to get French fries. And there wasn't like, there was very few bags left in the grocery store. And this was one of the very few bags because it is a little bit on the expensive side, I guess. So it was there. And we have French fries, baked French fries, just about every weekend. So we wanted our French fries, so I grabbed it and we loved it. So we needed it for this recipe. Now I'm going to be putting some stuff in the bowl and you're going to be like, what? But it's going to be really good. But I'm going to make the whole thing. And if I have, and I probably, because just Graham and I, so I probably will have batter left. And I will make, uh, probably make onion rings with the leftover batter. And uh, probably eat them tomorrow or something or tonight. Uh, who knows? Anyway, one cup of all-purpose flour. And I need to put a half a cup of corn starch or corn flour. And this was only a quarter of a cup, so I need to get a quarter of a cup more. So another quarter of a cup. And this, is where it get, this is where it gets kind of like, uh, what are you doing? One teaspoon of paprika. A half a teaspoon of chili powder. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Uh, this is salt to taste. One teaspoon of garlic powder. A quarter teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of baking powder. And you whisk that all together. And I have some water here. Basically, I want the consistency of a thick pancake batter. But to, and I'm just going to start off with not a lot of water to begin with and just add it. I might need to add more probably, but I have two thirds of a cup or about 157 milliliters or 160 milliliters of water. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of vinegar because vinegar will also make this nice and crispy. And on a plate, because I'm going to dredge my fish in some flour and uh, corn flour, cornstarch. I, I put a cup of, uh, about a cup of all-purpose flour and a quarter cup of cornstarch, and I mixed it on about, okay? After you mix this, you can't save the batter. You have to throw it away, what you're not, what you didn't use, okay? So that's why I probably will make some uh, onion rings or what have you. See, now that's a little too thick, but I wanted to make sure that vinegar was in there. So Graham called, he just said, just go ahead and make this and show you guys the fish. Uh, yeah, because work, it might be a little later. I thought that maybe you might be leaving early because of the weather. Now I just put in another, maybe about a quarter of a cup and that was borderline too much. So almost three quarters of a cup of water all together. One nice thing with this uh, fish batter, when you make your fish, it stays crispy. It stays, it, like, it stays crispy for a while, even then when you put it in the fridge and stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna dredge it, dip it in here and dredge it again, then put it in the oil because the Double dredging gives me extra crispy bits. And yeah, that's I, I really love the crispy bits. That's pretty good. I got this on like a medium high. I'm gonna dredge them all first. So they all get like the dry flour on it. Uh, I'm just using what was on sale at the grocery store. My favorite fish is cod. I love Atlantic cod and I love salt cod and all that, but uh, I have uh, here just some bass. It was the most economical way to go. Now I'm going to put it in here. And the oil that I'm using is just canola oil. 
and some lard that I had. Let's let her drip a little. Then a few bits of the flour again. Oh my gosh, this is kind of heavy. And then what I do is I just let it, see, I like my deep fryer better, but my deep fryer is really big because I used to make a, a, a lot for more, a lot more people. And I didn't want to use up all kinds of oil for that. So I'm doing this here. And uh, I let it, uh, usually I, I let it kind of move it a little bit as it's going in the oil and into the basket. And then I let it cook for a minute in the basket before I move it, before I shake the basket. Because I don't want the stuff to come off of the, the batter to come off the fish. But if it does, you just do a bit of patchwork by lifting it and drizzling some of the batter on it. Okay? Internal temperature for your fish is uh, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. However, I always go more than that and it tastes really good but at least go 145 degrees Fahrenheit, internal temperature. I used to work in a fish and chip shop for like, I don't know, years. Years, I tell you, years, when the boys were little. As uh, the owner worked around the kids' school schedule for me. And I nice and brown that's getting, but it's in there, it's in there, so. so I'll, just, I'll just make sure the batter didn't come off. It didn't. I'm just going to transfer them to a rack over a pan to let them drip. I'm going to grab a fork and uh, show you how crispy this piece of fish is. Crunchy, crunchy. I'll do a voiceover because the fan on the stove is loud. But look how nice looking that fish is. Now we can't forget that we have that awesome tater, a uh, tater, that awesome tartar sauce. So I'm gonna go get that. Put a spoon on this, on my piece of fish, to have a little tasty poo. And I'm telling you, it was so good. I hope that you guys make this tartar sauce and I hope that you make this fish batter. And although I'm making onion rings with this fish batter, I'm like, definitely try this, is what I'm telling you. Um, the onion ring batter I did on the channel from, I don't remember if it was a Betty Crocker cookbook or if it was, look at how delicious that is, a Better Homes and Garden cookbook, but the, I'll link at the end of this video and in the description box, that video with the onion rings. Because although I'm making the onion rings with the leftover batter, there's a simple onion ring batter that tastes great that I already have on the channel. Anyway, peace, love, and God bless. Take care, everyone. Bye.